SBF is out on a $250 million bail and yet he's still playing the crypto markets like a fiddle. Just days after shifting around a million dollars worth of altcoins into Bitcoin, he's yet again cashing out even more funds. This time, however, he's utilizing a former wallet used to take over SushiSwap back in the year 2020. So it's time to go down memory lane here as we look at the biggest crypto grifter. So the headlines reading that he's cashed out around 690,000 US dollars into a exchange via the Seychelles. So he's not using any centralized exchanges that we know about, but of course, obfuscating his tracks here. His parents, of course, work in the fields where hiding your wealth, knowing how to set up shell companies is part and parcel of what they've spent their whole careers doing. So no doubt he knows exactly how to hide these funds and get them cleaned again on the other end. So this one was picked up by Bowtide Iguana, an infamous on-chain sleuth of the crypto space here. So he says with this analysis, there's a few public addresses linking Sam to these moved funds here that are being transferred around via Alameda owned wallets. So the public address is OXD5 and OX738 are the ones in question here for some big movements of funds. So how are these two addresses tied to SushiSwap? Well, we have to go back into the history books here to see what happened previously. Do you remember this tweet, September 6th, 2020, when Nomi, the head chef over at SushiSwap, renounced control of the treasury and sent it over to Sam Bankman Freed? We've got the actual original tweets here. I'm transferring control to SBF Alameda now. That was his old handle. And he puts, okay, uh, OXD57 is the wallet address. So this all links together here as OXD57 wallet now commingles funds with the above wallets. And this is super interesting. Remember, he's on bail currently, $250 million bond posted. And yet his release conditions are that he not spend more than a thousand bucks without permission from the court. But he seems to be transferring hundreds of thousands of dollars on chain over the last few days. My accidental theft of our customers' life savings to create a giant over leveraged Ponzi slush fund for myself is a tragedy that should have never happened. And to all those affected, I want to say I am deeply sorry. So let's start with the wallet OXD57. This is the one that Nomi head chef at Sushi sent SBF, the whole Sushi treasury back in 2020. So we know this address belongs to Sam. So let's scroll down and see what we can see. So activity here two days and 12 hours ago, this address sending some funds over to OX738, one of the ones the Iguana posted about earlier. If you now go ahead and open this wallet OX738, you will see Sam has been a very busy boy here transferring hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of ETH across different wallets. He's kind of dispersed them into loads of micro wallets and tried to manage these funds. One of the most notable transfers here, two days, 13 hours ago, go he shifted 500 ethereums to one of his many sub wallets here from which he dispersed these funds even further you can see the breakdown here as the 500 ETH was split into 40 and 50 ETH batches and just sprayed across loads of different wallets. So we know this original wallet here, OXD5, the sushi based wallet is in fact 100% his. And now we can link it to these other accounts and for certain say Sam is either working alone here or with others to siphon as many funds as possible whilst he's on bail and presumably cash those out. Will he go on the run with this? I don't know, but odds are something very nefarious is going on. So after his release on bail, SBF's wallet sent all its remaining crypto to a new Ethereum address created just an hour earlier. In a three hour period, 100 new deposits were made to this wallet from various addresses, most having links to Alameda Research. In less than four hours from then, 570 ETH worth approximately 684K was transferred out of this new wallet to various destinations ending up at a no KYC exchange based in the Seychelles. And they also utilize the Bitcoin network here via the REN bridge. REN protocol is an Alameda funded protocol. So just far too many red flags for any of this to be a coincidence. It's clearly gotta be Sam. So the Iguana signs off, perhaps the SEC attorneys would like notice of this. Now a quick rewind back to 2020 when Anthony Pompliano interviewed SPF over the Chef Nomi saga and how he was transferred the whole sushi swap treasury. Now seeing this from a totally different lens at this point, because we know he's an outright fraud and a liar, it does really sound like a 10 year old just making up a story here if you listen in. Nomi seemed legitimately not to think that this was gonna be perceived the way it was. 
like there seemed to be a real like this wasn't sort of like him saying lol by you know this there's like a, a real disconnect here like i think that like you know i should get a percent of the tokens i think people would have been like yeah that sounds right you know that sounds like a like you deserve that and i uh, and you know, could have ended up with more than they did so how does it get transferred to you yeah so i i wrote some some tweet threads expressing expressing my displeasure and and uh, you know basically saying like you got to fucking transfer control of this project or it's just dead like you, you, no one is going to have faith in it with you with the keys like sort of like anyway i sort of like uh, that sucks like that that's sort of it for sushi um and i don't know took a nap and i i was like on a beanbag by my desk and so I just shouted out like hey someone just tweeted that nomi said he was going to give you the keys uh and it's it's a weird moment um but i i don't know i kind of got up and you know bolted to my computer and and in fact someone had tweeted tweeted a screenshot of nomi saying he was going to give me the keys to the treasury um so that's pretty weird and uh and i mean it was like uh kind of like an even more bizarre twist than the previous twist of him having taken like like sort of like you know was like a really strong negative twist and then an even weirder positive twist um but i uh, but yeah i mean i don't know he he then did it like he he, he sort of sent the, the keys to the 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 treasury that sort of changed my weekend plans i mean I, so this makes me think that SBF was in fact Chef Nomi all along. There's even some evidence here. I fucked up. I'm sorry. Using the same kind of apology that Sam used in his November 10th thread to the crypto community. I fucked up. I'm sorry. You can go back and read the Nomi tweets versus SBF tweets. They're stylized in a very similar way. We may never be able to prove this, but it does seem a little bit fishy that one of the earliest rugs in DeFi summer of 2020 may have been by yours truly, Sam Bankman Freed. So this one seems to go all the way to the top here. Six hours ago, this was posted. SBF met with Biden's senior advisors two months before the FTX collapse. He met them on at least four different occasions here. So we have the receipts or visitor logs of when Sam met with these advisors on these four occasions here. Most of the meetings were disclosed in visitor logs. However, there was also an additional meeting on September 8th where Joe Biden's counselor, Rochetti, met personally with SBF, but this one did not show up on the logs. So no need to beat about the bush. It looks like this dirty trail literally goes all the way to the President of the United States. Then from one scumbag to another, we have Logan Paul on screen here. Covered this one yesterday, condensed down CoffeeZilla's expose of Logan and his crypto zoo scam. And so Logan Paul essentially scammed a load of people out of these crap NFTs that never worked and also a token called the Zoo Token you can see on screen here. Uh, once he initially pumped it, the market cap was at $2 billion. It's now at 2.5 million fully diluted. And there's been no apology from Logan whatsoever. But in response to CoffeeZilla naming and shaming him and providing all the evidence to show all the different levels of scheming that went on for this project, his response is to literally openly mock CoffeeZilla. And with that, mock all the people, his fans that he scammed out of their hard earned cash. Remember, this was a guy I think was banned off YouTube originally for laughing at Japanese suicide victims. So it seems a leopard does not change its spots and this guy is still a scumbag. So drop me a comment down below. Do you think SBF is planning an escape here, cashing out all his funds and getting ready to find new pastures somewhere in the abyss? I'll see you in the next one, folks. Goodbye. Hey, hi. Uh, so uh, I'm SBF, uh, founder and CEO of FTX. My accidental theft of our customers' life savings to create a giant overleveraged Ponzi slush fund for myself is a tragedy that should have never happened. And to all those affected, I want to say I am deeply sorry. I'm sorry. <sighs> I'm sorry. Sorry. Oops. Sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry. I'm deeply sorry. Heh. <laughs>
Sorry. Oopsie doopsie. Freeze! Ladies and gentlemen, we got him.